hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the SaaS Marketing Makeover. I am very excited today to be joined by Gerard Green. Gerard, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Gary. How are you doing? I'm alive. I'm like, I get so excited for this stuff. Like, I just got yeah. like, my energy is just spilling over. I, I, you, they didn't tell you who's on the wheel, right? No, I don't know who's on the wheel. That's why I said, let's go. I don't know who's on the wheel. I don't know. You seen one of these before at all, by the way? I have. Yeah, I have. Oh, I did my homework. Yeah, I love this. This okay. is awesome. Like, when you guys reached out. I'm like, let's go. I've been waiting for this. So, all right. Oh, yeah. Let's get into well, it. Let's have some fun. Brian, let's spin that wheel. Let's see what we got today. Data brick services. Dude. Ooh. I don't know who's service titan. All service right. titan. Man. All right. They just tightened in their space, man. Let's, uh, let's get into uh, it. You can see my screen, correct? I can see your screen. I'm a I'm an Atlanta Falcons fan, and my favorite Falcons player of all time, Julio Jones, is now a Titan. Uh, I'm say, man. Yeah. Yeah. How, and it's tough. How is it yeah. being a Falcons fan, man? Are you, how are you doing with that? I'm not not well. Not well, guys. Not well. <laughs> check check. I say check on your Falcons fan friends, man. We are not okay, but uh, <laughs> we are resilient. We are resilient, if nothing else. I love it. Well, we're going to have to replace Matt Ryan one of these days and see what happens. So, but y'all did it once. Y'all can do it again. So let's, uh, let's look at this today. So we're, we've got, there's a better way to grow. Okay. Um, the world's leading all in one software, commercial and residential HVAC plumbing, electrical and other field service businesses. I don't got any issues with it. Um, do you think my dad, my dad was a custom cabinet guy. Do you think he knows if he gives you his email, he can get started? Or do you think he's confused by this? I think he knows if you give the email to get started. I don't think he's inclined to give you his email. There's no, there's no hook. I, I'm a big fan of uh, elements of your position and statement in your, your hero copy. And if I can get elements of who you are, which is here, uh, why you're different, kind of here, uh, and why I should care, I'm inclined to give you something. Um, so the notion of world's leading is always one of my pressure points. The by what, by what category is it? Market share is it? Number of customers is it? Customer sentiment. So it's like world leading sometimes kind of gets me gets me cross footed. Um, software got it cool. We're in that category, and then I get some sense of the industry space you serve. So if I'm in that, I I might stick around for a bit, but. I think we're like one for three on this. Um, but isn't it for weird fun. asking for the email instead of just having a button where I can like get you to that last? That, cause I get what you're saying, right? You're saying like, yeah, yeah. bro, like, I kind of like this, but why don't you like, be like explore the product or see how we grow your business or some type of yeah. CTA and takes me to a value conversation of if you give me your email, like watch, this is what I mean. Like why not yeah. send them? Oh, come on, y'all. What? what are we going to talk about on the demo? How long's the demo? What, what should I get from this? I think like, watch here, we do everything for these guys back in the day before they did their IPL. I always use this, right? Mm -hmm. No credit card required up and running in minutes. You're in good company. Here's who uses them. Now sign mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like, when is like, when's yeah. the demo? Yeah, this is a, uh, trust me. You know, this is one of those like, hey, just, you know, give give, give me the email address and, and, and just assume and trust that the good things will happen. So you're right. There's no incentive for me to provide the email off the rip so fast on the date. And I think the other thing here is we got to know who we're serving, right? I come from Blue Collar. My business co mm -hmm. partner comes from Blue Collar. My dad did custom cabinets. My business partner did plumbing, right? And these aren't mm -hmm. big shops, right? Like, Right. And... They usually have like one day every other week or one day a week where they have like office time. You know what I'm saying? Like on Friday, they'll kind of do their office stuff. But why not make the video on demand? Why not have like a watch demo video, watch four minute demo video now? And then yeah. it's right here, instead of agree and get started, it's get demo video now. And then yeah. I can watch the demo video on my own time. And then you can follow up with me because imagine trying to call blue collar dudes that are in the field all day. And then not picking up their phone. Imagine yeah. how hard it is to get inbound SDR at service time and get someone to a demo. I can't imagine that help. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. 
That's tough. I do like, I, so I love the concept of, we've been playing with this for a while, like this concept of like the micro demo, right? Like you, you, you just spelled it out perfectly. I only have a couple minutes a day if I'm inclined to shop for something at all. And when I get there, I want to be able to see something that makes sense for me. And you might not show me the full blown thing. I don't want to see the full 15, 20, 30 minute personalized by persona, by use case demo, um, but show me something. Uh, and then my curiosity will kick in if I think you can solve my problem. So if that little micro demo just shows me a few use cases, a few capabilities, a few screens, now I'm here. Like that dashboard doesn't do a ton. Yeah, now of I'm I following up with you instead right. of the other way around. Exactly. Exactly. I want to see more, but like you got you got to get me there. I'm here. I'm at the website now. Now give me something to do without asking for you know the number so early on the date. <laughs> What percent of people click this video, you think, like in your experience? You know what I mean? Because I feel like the answer to a lot of our problems. Service Titan is a lot of solutions in one location. I have to look at seven different spreadsheets to be able to see whether we have a successful day or not. My girlfriend says I look at the dashboard way too much because I look at it every five minutes. <laughs> we have everything right now. Everything. The biggest part that I liked was all the tracking Service Titan offers. The sales numbers to average job numbers. Right, so they have this. What percent of people you think are clicking here and actually learning that? <sighs> Very few, man. And it's not it's not shade, right? I just I think it, it's a clear call to action that if I push that, the video starts. That that's not there by accident. Um, yeah. But again, the notion of like I'm watching the video and I still like I don't know what category they serve. I don't know what industry they're in. We were talking before offline, right? Like the. No, well, let's keep going. But I think like very few click because even watching the video, I still, I, I know you have a dashboard. I know you have a dashboard. I know the guy looks at it a lot, but I don't know what kind of problems you solve for me or my team that make me want to continue the, the path of self-education. I get that. I think we got to say some one thing on service side's behalf though. They are the big behemoth in the space. I think they that big, bad, they're like Salesforce, if that makes sense. So they like, to their defense, but I guess to your point, maybe they're assuming too much. Like, you know what I mean? They are service time. Like, I know from the blue collar. You know them. Like, they, they big and bad. If you're a contractor and you are at the size where you're trying to use a tool, you looking at service time. Like, if you're Absolutely. Look at sales, you look at Salesforce, right? Sure. But how does that change messaging in your mind? Should it? Should it not? Like, you, because, like, that's, I think, something we have to take into consideration is, like, they're mass market leader with insane market Great. share. No, I love that. Um, but again, I go back to the notion of like, I, I get it. I don't get it where it fits in the context of your competitive positioning. Um, are there other companies with similar, can other companies make similar claims right now? And if the answer is no, then you've, you've assumed a lot, you've done it, right? But is there another company that has over 100,000 contractors? Is there another company that could claim world's leading? Is there another company that has a, a dashboard that provides the insights you need? Like if there's someone even close, then I would flex on, on my ability to beat out a little louder or a little a little harder i agree because what you're trying to say and i think i if i can articulate this perfectly is like i don't understand what outcome you consistently create for me from right here other than this generic language of there's a better way to grow it's like grow what and yeah how often why like why do you exist and i think they exist frankly because i think they're the first people that actually built sexy software for blue collar for, for so blue collar yeah, so yeah. they kind of have that advantage. They're like, I feel like they're kind of like HubSpot, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. In the sense of like real, you can kind of see, oh, here they go. I like this, right? So outcome-based product lines. Yeah, I like this. Yep. But I always have this question. You're a product guy, so I want to ask you. Is it hard for people to understand if they can buy just the call booking and the scheduling? And like, is it hard to package when you break it out like this? Or is that not an issue? Or are the customers used to that? What's your opinion on this kind of like version of packaging? I, I prefer a scenario where I click on something that I'm eventually going to buy in some context. Um, I don't think customers like the notion of a bait and switch where, and I don't know what's happening here, so I'm not, I'm not saying that they're doing this, but I don't like the notion of clicking in on something and saying, yeah, I just want this thing, and then finding out it's part of the best package. And in order to get that, I have to buy the best, but I only want this one thing. And if I only want this one thing and you won't sell it to me in a silo, I could probably get it from someone else. And then the trade-off I have to make is as a buyer, right? I can get your best of platform thing, or I can get the best thing for this use case. Please just tell me what I'm doing so that I know how to spend the next five minutes. Because the last thing I want to do is be told that I want to solve this one use case, or I want this capability, or I want to replace this thing that's getting on my nerves, but I have to get call, 
qualification and a demo just to learn that. Then then I'm frustrated as a buyer. Yeah, because you're like, well, look, bro, I already got call rail, so I don't really need this. And I'm already my team's already using like uh mind body for scheduling or memberships. What I really want is like this dispatch. I guess what I'm not clear of with the way they talk about it is can I just buy dispatch? And I don't know. I don't know. Is that like a question? I guess I, I know it sounds crazy, but nobody really talks about this in marketing for SaaS. Like, is that a huge issue you face? Like if yeah, I can just totally. buy it? Can- yeah, we face that a lot. Some people's like, I, I just want content from you guys. I just want content. I don't want the other bits. Can you just sell me content? And I think there might've been a world where we say, well, of course we can just sell you content, but we want to sell you other things. And that's why we want to have a conversation. It's not done to confuse. It's not done to stifle. I just think in the world of, you only have but a couple minutes to really engage someone's attention. You know that most people are coming to you with 70% of their mind made up if we're doing our job the right way. And so what can we do to take the friction out of the buying process by doing things like we sell three packages. It's this, it's this, it's this. I don't have to tell you how much it costs. I'm just telling you we're going to bundle this stuff here, this stuff here, and this stuff here. So you can either opt in and keep going or just say, I don't want to do it that way. Either way, we're not wasting your time. You're not wasting ours. Yeah, I guess to that point, how do you think they're doing on buying their product? Because like, I know this sounds crazy, but like, if I go over here, I can kind of see this over. You sell a product. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Right, And I can see your product. And when I go here, I actually love what they're doing. And they have these features. I can find all the things I want. I don't know how I buy it, though, I guess. Like, I don't yeah. know if – and there's no pricing. And then there's this pro products. So, and this may be this may be packaged this may be packaged by persona. So, if I'm the marketing person, they've put together some offerings or some elements of the product or some use cases and features that should be really attractive to me as a marketer. I actually really like this page because for me to get here says, "Hey, as the CMO or as the marketing leader, here's all the benefits we can provide you guys with." And when you look at our marketing pro thing, here are all the quantified outcomes and the use cases and the testimonials and the screens. Like, this is dope. And I wish like I got here faster from some form of, you know, intent or some form of persona. Like this is kind of what I'd lead with, if that makes sense. This is really, this is really solid. I agree. I think my disconnect once again, though, is like the persona, I guess. Right. So we got to think that it's just a 45 year old dude who is like, okay, but I like, how does the owner buy? And I know it sounds crazy, but I do think these are all small businesses. So like, where's the, all overall pro you get like where's the platform and i know that sounds crazy but i feel like no it doesn't there's where's that page you know what i mean like where's my platform page that ties marketing price book and phones together all together yeah i feel like they're missing that and that would drive aov that would drive clarity i could understand like i would want to see a through like watch this on a i was showing this earlier i think watch this like here's what i mean by that so here's how workday solves this and this is kind of my example earlier was see how you have all these tools, but then you have about the suite. Yep, and then the you suite. can see how it ties that all together. And now I see one suite that's designed for change. That's what I want here, right? One platform designed for field service businesses. Right, right. Boom. Now, and I can buy your product. Yeah, it's a yes and, right? To me, it's not an either or. You're right. Like that see all features, if that was see the platform. Because then, then it delivers on the promise on the homepage of, this is why we're the world's largest. This is why there's a better way. This is why we're trusted by over 100,000 contractors because we're a full-blown end-to-end suite that meets 95% of your needs. Whether you have them today, we'll have them tomorrow, we'll have them three years from now, we're, we're going to have you covered. And so like that that makes a ton of sense to me. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I just see it as such a big opportunity cool. for that. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's there. I like, I like the architecture. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is there. And I like kind of the architecture of the, the, the wheel you have in kind of that second third of there, there is that element of like here. Here's at least some of the platform stuff. Right now we're starting to put that piece together of like we're wrapping these features capabilities around, you know, you in the middle and our platform. Th- there it is. That, that's your platform. That's where it is. Let me click on it. Right. Let me click on that. And yeah. then you show me how you tie it all together. Okay, I think that's a big win for them if they could do that. And I think it would make them so much money and it would increase average order value, I would guarantee. Because you could sell it from a different angle. And like what I was trying to tell people is you should sell with your grocery cart full of all your groceries and then customers can take things out. 
You mm-hmm. don't want to start with an empty grocery cart and then be codependent on AEs to convince customers to put things in. It's yeah. really hard to control that sales process at scale across a large SDR or AE team. Absolutely. And it's easy to get caught in that world of putting things in when you typically are coming to them on a use case, right? There, there's something yeah. hurts, right? Something's broken. Something's not working. And I like the fact that they speak that language in the product tour. Uh, there's yeah. the grow revenue. There's the other one I, I remember seeing. Yeah, streamline ops, the insights. Like one of those four things are broken. And here are the solutions we have to help you solve for this. I, I think that makes a ton of sense. You ultimately have all these issues. You don't You don't just have one. Like no one's ever had a day where they're like, I got it all nailed. Like I, all my customers are impressed. I got all the insights I need for days and operations have never been more streamlined. Like they're going to have all four of these at some point in time. But you know, what hurts now? And I think if yeah. you can kind of get me on like the pain because I just got out of the QBR and I got reamed out or, you know, I just had a meeting with my sales team and this is all the things they cursed me out about. Like I'm going to start my search and try to find something to resolve that pain. And this does a good job of laying that out. I want to get to that next level of like, what's the what's the use case I can solve for now? Because I don't want to buy a dead end solution. I don't want to buy a solution that's going to solve one piece of my pain if I can do it for more. But I might not buy it all today. If that makes sense. I love that. I would even encourage them to package this, package this, package this, package this, and then have one total overall package that ties them all together with their like service titan viewpoint on the world and why they exist. And then as an AE, I could sell operations because then look at this. This is a different buyer than this buyer than this buyer than this buyer. And that one, yep. a larger. And then I could have this buying center, this buying. See what I'm saying? I could. Yep. I always look at things. I'm like a sales guy at heart, so I'm looking at like how I could package this so that I could increase my average order value and sell four things at once along around one throughput of what that is. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's interesting. So like we run into this dynamic a lot as, as much as you want the buyer committee to be aligned, you, you sometimes don't. Um, sometimes you just want to sell against one use case because your champ, your mobilizer solving the one thing and they don't want to rock the boat of the other groups thing. So they have a thing, they bought a thing, they got a project going on. I got this thing. One day we're going to go over there, but not today. Can you just help me land this thing and we'll expand later? And I think the ability to help the buyer separate those worlds and also help the other people who might come into the committee later understand that it's just their piece right now it is an effective tool. So here's what I mean. If this was, and this isn't, this isn't service tight right now. But if you thought about the world where it's just like, here's a platform that solves all these needs across sales and marketing and operations and and demand generation. The minute someone from that other team that's not yours sees the thing, they're like, no, dude, I'm I'm already buying this thing or we already bought this thing and I'm invested. Miss me with all that. I just want, like, I have a thing. You go figure out your thing. And so as much as you want to have these consensus buys and alignment, sometimes the need to parse them out is advantage to you because ultimately you'll land You'll expand over time and you need to help people parse those use cases out as opposed to feeling like you're buying something you're trying to shove down their throat later on. No, I love that. And I, I think you're spot on, man. And I think the uh, I think all of what they're doing is great. I think you also induce a lot of churn and hurt your LTV and thus your ability to acquire customers when you sell things they don't want because then they feel like they have a bloated retainer where they're paying for things they're not using. So I think yeah. that's like that other thing so when when we look at resources what what do you think about their content what what do you want to see here kind of what do you want to take a look at i think this comparison is pretty cool comparison let's take a look at it compared to okay i like these verses i like that they invite the smoke against these 10 um i wonder what it looks like behind so if i want to see them versus field edge it's okay it's their point of view um here's what i like about it here's what i don't um oh no keep going let's just let's do it this is pretty rich, actually. It's not bad, right? So they have all these features of like apply for financing. This they is rich. A, this is this, bro. This is I might use this as an example. This Ooh, still I didn't go whoa. Them. They they got uh, okay. some confidence, man. Doing this, I love that. They, this is the kind of they, I work for. This is this is this is the all the smoke bit. Like I like I see this kind of detail in like an internal battle card, and I'm stoked. But the notion of just putting it out there to the competitor, like, yeah, this is what we say about you. What are you going to do about it? I kind of like that. Exactly. Yeah, it's rich. And I wonder I wonder if it's too rich. Um, I wonder if there's a world where knowing what you say about me 
yeah. Maybe the service offers this as a fully integrated feature. Field Edge uses a third party supplier. I oh come on, man. That's actually so it's hard. there. Well, it's there, yeah. but if I'm if I'm if I'm Field Edge, I'm like, actually, that's not true. And I know that that's a dagger you try to land. So let me get my game right. Like this being so public is great. Maybe maybe it's by persona though. I gotta remember who this is for. Maybe having all that information up front saves that buyer the energy on doing what you and I might do, which is go into a G2 crowd or go into a Gartner peer insights to do the competitive. If I serve you all the competitive, I'm keeping you active as opposed to letting somebody else control the narrative somewhere else. Well, yeah. And then if I'm using the right CDP and marketing system, I can tell which competitors mm -hmm. you evaluated me against when I send it to an SDR and then I can have yep. a different sales playbook. Exactly. That was rich. Um, I was saying in the beginning when, when we first started it, um, I sometimes frown upon kind of your Harvey ball analyses that you do as a vendor. Cause of course you're going to say you have things that they don't like that's, that's to be expected. And you might like yeah, beating on fingers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you get that and you're like, all right, cool. But you know, at some point, like that's, if I'm fielded, I could, I can negate that. So what I've been a, a big fan of is using the actual voice of customer in comparisons. And I think they have the testimonials at the bottom, but I'd love the notion of like, hey, your last five wins against Field Edge were driven by what? And what do those customers look like? What were they looking for? What problems were they looking to solve for? Uh, um, you would see that there. Maybe that's a competitive replacement, right? Like we were using Field Edge, but we didn't like them and we replaced it. Or we evaluated and did a head-to-head. -head. We chose them because of X, Y, Z. I, I think that's dope to be able to, to kind of showcase the voice of customer in it. But I'd love to go one step further and have, you know, you do these RFPs and customers will kind of send you their scorecards if they're friendly to say you beat vendor X on these features. What if you amalgamated all that up and you said they have these features, they're not missing. Ours are just better. And ours are better because our customers have said it. And here are five of them who echo the same sentiment. I, I think that's a good use of uh, voice of customer. I love that. And they're killers, man. I've never seen anybody do this before. They straight up put this on the blog. Like a blog, what Jordan bro. HVAC owner said, and then he's just talking about like it was a great product. We did not sign up for True Service Sign then, and I regret it every day. Damn. It was between True Service Sign and Field Edge at TriStar, and we pulled the trigger with Field Edge. I was never satisfied. It was never what they said it was going to be. I mean, they're killers, man. I love this because uh, I tell my team all the time. It's one of the things that like my little Gerardisms and the team pokes me on. Whether this dude is still a, a service Titan customer or not is irrelevant. And <laughs> I, and I, and I, cause I've said this for many years, like I, I would get like, it's like, okay, update the customer testimonials. That customer is not a customer anymore. And I'm like, but the story happened. Um, yeah. I went to the prom with someone that I didn't end up with, but we, we went to the prom together. Like the picture's <laughs> there. It's on, it's on, it's on her mother's mantle. It's probably in my grandmother's house somewhere. You can't take that away. We went to the prom together. So, I like the notion of like, whether this is an active case study, whether this gentleman's still with that company or not, those quotes are heavy. I love service site. That's what he said. The field I'm edge going, never oh, did. Going. I love it. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is good. Look at these tools too. This, bro, imagine trying to compete against these guys and being like the <laughs> field edge. Like I kind of almost feel bad. Like they don't, they don't have it like this. And you can like, look at these two, like the amount of tools and like things they have to throw that demonstrate their expertise and it's also clean on the branding and the design for the space. This is pretty it's, good. It's really good. And I, I love the, uh, I love the concept of uh, buyer enablement, champion enablement, getting your buyers, the tools they need to make a purchase decision. Like at the end of the day, they can like you all they want. They can love your features. They'll go to your events. They'll drink your Kool-Aid. They'll, they'll hang out with your customers. If they don't buy it, like, I'm not gonna say what's the point, but like you want them to buy, right? So what can you give them to help make the purchase? And so if you own the market on the ROI tools, the business case tools, the analysis tools, not only do you control the narrative on what's important, right? Because they're already starting to set up what value drivers they want to instill on the buying process. They're already, by asking you these questions, they are telling you what you should value in a solution. Yeah. I bet they don't ask questions on the things that they're weak on, if they're weak on anything. So exactly. the, ability, the ability to control the narrative puts another company on the defensive because I would love it if the ROI calculator or the business case calculator came out and wasn't branded service Titan. I'd love it if it came out branded as blank, you know, whatever, 
drop your logo here. Drop your and logo. Go show your boss. Yeah. yeah, go go show your boss you did all this work. And it already sets the table for what they do versus what the other guys don't. And I just I just think that's dope. I like that. That's a sick campaign, man. Like, draw that would be dope, man. Like to have like ad logo here, and then you could sell your boss internally. That's clever. I you're like, done. Like now you're done, and it's just like, wow, you know, you Garrett, you put a lot of work into this. You must really, <laughs> you must <laughs> really, <laughs> you must believe. Wow, you did a business case and an ROI, and it's just like, yeah, I, you know, I, I think this is important. And then what, what, what's so deflating? Because I was on the other side of this once. What's so deflating is like. Maybe maybe you're in an organization where um, you know your procurement team says you have to look at another vendor. Like we we can't do sole source. You have to. So then, if I use your tool and I let you input what the other guys do, I still set the table. I set these traps on missing features, missing capabilities, missing value drivers, and now they're on the defensive, scrambling. I'm no no use our tool. No no I don't want to use your tool. I don't want two tools. That speak yeah. two different languages. So wow, that's a rich repository of tools. No, it's awesome, man. They they doing they doing really big stuff. I you like it. Type, you can see their resources. I mean, they're killers. Like the contractor playbook. Oh my god, full chapters. Like they took building something for someone that normally gets something like this, and this would be this is probably pretty innovative back in the day. By the way, like this would be considered insane branding and design, and I would say this is one of those spaces like if service science is publicly traded, I would buy their stock. I don't know who's going to disrupt them. Like they're that much better positioned and have that much more resources. I, this is this is it, man. Like this is the marketing playbook for owning a niche and beating the crap out of everybody around you. That's 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 a power move. That is that is playing with house money. The build your own playbook piece because again, for the content marketer, that had to write that. There wasn't this notion of. Dude, no one's going to read all that content. It's the notion of people are going to select their own chapters. How about that? Yeah. How about how about I'm going to put out this body of knowledge and I'll let people tell me which ones. And then the telemetry I get on, you know, get nobody ever selects this chapter. Nobody wants to read this. Well, guess what? I'm not going to update. It's pretty simple. Like, it's just like you don't have to. Yeah. I mean, it's just if there's pieces you don't like, this is rich. It's good. Dude, they're making us look bad over here. I don't know about you, but I gotta set my game up. These, this I'm, is like I'm taking notes. Like, look at the next section. I know it's got all everything like baked out. And notice how they're using the like. If you read the copy of the previous two, I, our copy, I rarely can get. Oh, let me see if I can find a few. Is and like in the early 2000s, John Holsapple boarded a plane. They're using storytelling, <laughs> and I did not speak Japanese. I know when he told a virtual audience as part of Service Science Pantheon 2020. You're like, oh my, you know I mean? like they're tying it out now, CEO at <laughs> this company, following years of scrappy overseas. I finally it's, changed it, my world with you know this tool. It's brilliant, man. It's it's and it's evergreen, right? It's not oh, it's yeah. not something that it, this you and I could be reading this. This could be copied as four years old. We don't know, but we don't care. It's super it's super captivating. It, it walks me through why I should care and what to do about it. You have I love I love the ad. You you but to be, you have a company to build. And it really speaks to kind of your authority, your your industry expertise, the, the command of the message you have. And now I'm drawn to figure out well, what else can you service Titan teach me? I'm buying your product, but if you can provide a field of knowledge and expertise, that's a plus one. And man, if you have a community of other people that I can tap into that also use this thing, that's a plus 20. Now, now you've got an ecosystem. Now you got a weapon that you can yield there. Very few people could touch that may even compensate for pieces of your product that may be lacking. Well, yeah. I mean, look at this, man. They're doing long form content with customer interviews all baked into product marketing. It's insane. I mean, this is this is like yeah, single tier. Up. Yeah, yeah. Shout out. Yeah, shout out to service site. And that's what's up. This was amazing. So, Gerard, sorry to high spot. You're not a CMO? No. Nah. Service time. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> that'd be an interesting got- conversation one day. <laughs> So you're now in charge of all marketing over there and you got three things you're going to change despite some of the awesome stuff we saw today. And, you know, kudos to service time, you know, hats off to y'all. Y'all are crushing it. Kudos. What are three things you might want to do different uh, in your opinion? Um, I want to lead, I want to drive more. I kind of want to be Thanos in this thing now. 
right? Like, it's just like, you re you really want to go extra, extra. Like, I I come from kind of the B2B IT, and now I'm selling to sales and marketing folks. One of the things we lean on a lot is like Gartner validation. Um, are you a leader in their MQ? Um, does that matter to your buyer? And if it doesn't, maybe not. But if it does, it can certainly help slipstream procurement. It can help certainly help slipstream any other naysayers you have. Most people want to buy people at the top right of that MQ. So where do you sit in that? And, and, and how does that kind of help you assert that brand narrative? Not because you said you're awesome, but because the world's leading, you know, IT research consulting firm that validates it as well. So if that exists, I'd like to see that on the forefront. Let's get some third party voices into the narrative. And I'd, I'd like to see how that gets pulled forward. Um, even if you're not a leader in that quadrant, um, you putting it out there to help reset the narrative could be interesting. Um, that can be a great demand gen lever, again, for what it's worth. And you've seen this at other B2B companies. If you gate that MQ and you're the first one out to market with it, you can now set the narrative on how you fit where you're different and, and, and use that as a, as a piece of content that you don't have to write that can, uh, yep. can generate some leads for you. So I'd like to see that there. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more of the customer stories in terms of the transient problems that they solve. Uh, that first video was really about, we love service tight and here are the dashboards, here are the things that I do. I spend more time on the dashboards with my girlfriend. I think that's really like to see this is the problem we have. This is the problem we solve for. And to be a little more real time with it, we're, we're obviously still in the middle of a pandemic, right? But I think the companies that tell the story of how they help customers solve problems when the world went upside down are the companies that are going to resonate and land a lot quicker in this very narrow window. We, we have to tell those stories. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, 100 percent, man. I think, you know, what I would add to this is I would talk just a little bit. I'll make it a little bit more articulate or clear around how I buy the product. Can I mm -hmm. buy just the call tracking? Can I not? Do I buy a package? Do I not? Also, pricing. Is it fully modular and that's why we don't do pricing? And if it is fully modular, could I build my own quote? Like oh. that Genesis example is really, really cool. And it still requires a salesperson. And I, I was showing this from last one, but they had this uh, over here, design your solution. I feel like designing your solution, this like workflow that Genesis built right here could be pretty killer for this type of product suite yeah, that ServiceType has. So like, you know, I think packaging is something I'm going to be really care about if I was over there, um, packaging and pricing. And then I think to our point earlier, we want to maybe do a better job showcasing our product. I, that, the call to actions, you just want me to get a demo, but I don't know what I'm going to get on the demo. What's that? So a little bit of conversion optimization, some low hanging fruit there, and then a little better like storytelling. Mm -hmm. Why does Service Titan exist? I know who, how many people use you. You tell me all about it. But why do they use you over everyone else? What's the service titan difference? And I think it's just that their marketing is better than everyone. I want to know why their product's better than everyone in yeah. the viewpoint of the world. How do you believe a field service business should run? And how are they currently running today? And why did you build service time to bridge that gap? And I think that story could yeah. essentially decommoditize them increase their propensity of their like customer to buy, raise rates, get better EBITDA, better gross margin. I think there's just a lot of wins you can get to capitalize on their already market leader positioning and then double down uh, at the product level. So this was phenomenal. Gerard, thanks for being on the show. Um, thanks for having me. I appreciate so it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, um, if anyone wants to follow along with your journey, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? LinkedIn. I'm an open book. Uh, reach out, direct message right on the page. Uh, always happy to engage anybody anytime on anything. So um, yeah, hit me up. I love it. I love it. Well, thanks so much. And uh, that's SaaS Marketing Makeover, everybody. Okay. Thanks.